In this video, we're going to cover one of the things that people ask about the most that are thinking about moving to Portland, which is how's the crime situation. As always, we're going to go over some numbers. We'll look at some recent news. I'll uh, give you some of my opinions on these things. And uh, by the end of this video, I think you'll have a much better feeling as to what crime used to be like, what crime is like now, and where things are heading. You won't want to miss this one. All that starts now. Welcome back to the channel, Living in Oregon. Uh, we're going to go over, like I mentioned, some numbers here. But first, uh, an article was just recently written that I came across when I was looking at some of these things. I thought it was a pretty interesting take. It appears the uh, the author is from Portland. It says, in the summer of 2020, Portland, Oregon became the poster child for American urban disaster zones. During the day, tens of thousands of citizens protested peacefully against police brutality following the murder of George, George Floyd. In Minneapolis, but everything changed after dark. Nonviolent demonstrators with jobs, school assignments, and kids to raise went home. Hundreds of anarchists swarmed in to take their place and wage low grade insurgency against the city. They fought pitched battles with cops throwing rocks, frozen water bottles, fireworks, buckets of excrement, and even Molotov cocktails. They attacked coffee houses, immigrant-owned restaurants, mom-and-pop retail stores, banks, museums, churches, bus stops, and the Multnomah County Democratic Party headquarters with baseball bats, crowbars, and hammers. Most were military-aged white males wearing all-black clothing and hiding their faces. The violence kept up night after night, week after week, and month after month into the winter, long after the rest of America had calmed down. My city, and that's where I'm uh, assuming the author uh, is from Portland, my city had become the most politically violent place in the country, and I got worried emails from people I knew around the world, even the Middle East, asking me if I was okay and why on earth was this happening. A crime wave followed. Shootings and homicides exploded 300% between 2019 and 2022. Robberies rose 50% in 2022 alone. Vehicle thefts hit record highs and work order requests for graffiti. Removal shot up 500% between 2020 and 2022. The City of Roses suffered from 413 shootings in 2019, but 1,306 in 2022, and nearly twice and nearly twice as many homicides as San Francisco, though Portland is only three-fourths its size. Meantime, statewide crime actually declined from 2019 to 2021. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, we'll look at some older stats too. I've got some stats uh, as far back as 2015, so we can really kind of compare and uh, contrast. Homelessness crisis also intensified the slow motion collapse of Oregon's mental health infrastructure, dramatic surge of cheap and deadly fentanyl, and a far more important an addictive form of psychosis-inducing meth and a crippling housing shortage led, it, led to the formation of more than 700 tent cities in residential neighborhoods and business districts across the city. Uh, we'll come back to this article to uh, kind of get to the, uh, the author's conclusion, but let's look at some of the data first here. So this is going to be from July 2022 to July 2023. That's the most recent data that we have. I'll just kind of cover some of the, uh, the the bigger crimes that people are usually uh, more worried about, such as assault. So 10,126 assaults uh, over the past year. But more importantly, where are these things happening? So you see this map right here. This is the color-coded map. So the darker blue indicates the higher concentration of these things, the lighter colors, the lower concentration of these things. And uh, I'll take this. Is, uh, actually, this will actually show us some of the neighborhoods. But uh, just roughly for you, this is North Portland over here, St. John's, Northeast Portland over here, East Portland over here, Southeast Portland over here. This is downtown right here, and then South Portland down here. So assault offenses. Where are the assaults taking place? Downtown which you're going you're gonna to see that's going to be pretty common throughout this video for a lot of the crimes. You're going to find downtown, there's going to be, of course, a, a, a much higher concentration of people, just like any other downtown for a, a major metropolitan area. But one thing that's really going to stand out right here, I think, uh, throughout some of these uh, numbers that we'll go through, is this is the east side of Portland. What is this one right here? Hazelwood, uh, Powell, Centennial, Lentz. You're going to see those neighborhoods uh, commonly uh, with some of these uh, these crimes uh, that have some of the larger numbers next to them. 
So homicides. This is the one that uh, a lot of people are going to care about, of course. One of the, one of the numbers that people are going to want to know the most. Where am I most, most likely to get killed? Right. So not a lot changes, uh, unsurprisingly, between the assault and the homicides, with the exception of uh, maybe a little bit of a tick down in, in downtown, but a lot of those homicides taking place in East Portland. And I'm going to show you actually a little bit later in this video as well, uh, a survey that was done um, by the citizens that I referenced in our end of summer real estate update video about a month ago. Um, that's, that's really going to reflect uh, some of this data as well. You, you can see how the citizens feel about uh, their safety. All right, so burglary. Where's all the burglary taking place? So a little bit more spread out. Um, one thing that uh, kind of stood out to me here, probably not a surprise that not much is going to change over on the east side, but this right here, you might have noticed, you might have noticed uh, from the assaults and the homicides, this neighborhood didn't change much, but for burglary, the numbers were much higher for this neighborhood, and this is uh, the neighborhood northwest. So this is a uh, historically been one of the, and still is, of course, uh, one of the nicest neighborhoods in Portland. Uh, this is where you start to get the hills, and there's a lot of really nice homes back up there that have great views, a lot of really sought-after real estate in this area. So might be the reason why um, people are targeting that area at a, a little bit of a higher frequency in Northwest as opposed to other places. But you can see, you know, th throughout uh, most of North, Northeast, East, Southeast Portland, uh, you're going to find uh, that you're going to find burglaries uh, in, in most places. Now, just right next to uh, uh, at Montanaville, too, if, if you've looked up this stuff uh, before, if you've Google searched any of this stuff, you'll, you'll see that Montanaville comes up quite a bit as well. Aside from these uh, areas, Montanaville, Powell, Centennial, Lentz, right next to these areas, Mount Tabor, North Tabor, Laurelhurst, these are some of the most sought after neighborhoods in the Portland metropolitan area. And you can see their, their numbers are actually lower. Um, but uh, if you want to be in one of those neighborhoods, you're going to be right, right up against uh, some of the places that you may potentially want to avoid. And by the way, we're talking about these statistics uh, as a real estate broker, uh, which I am, I'm a licensed broker in the state of Oregon. If you ever talk to a realtor about these things, they're going to uh, ask you to do a Google search or just refer to statistics online. As realtors, we're not supposed to speak directly to a buyer uh, about these types of things, specifically about crime. Uh, it can lead to something in our uh, business known as steering. In other words, we're not supposed to steer people to particular or away from particular neighborhoods and discussing crime can do that. Uh, but speaking to you as the viewer on YouTube, I'm um, speaking more broadly. So normally you wouldn't have these types of conversations with the realtor, which is part of the reason why I'm doing this video is so that you can have this information and kind of have the, the, the perspective um, from a real estate broker. Again, again, I'll maybe give you some of my opinions later in this video. Uh, the data isn't necessarily my perspective, but Realtors really aren't supposed to talk about these things at all, including the data. Uh, we're just supposed to direct you to look at these things online. So I'm going to save you the time and, and go over these numbers with you. Larceny. So in other words, uh, theft. Where are you going to find the most amount of theft? Spread out probably about as evenly as uh, any of the crimes that we'll look at here. Going to be the highest downtown. A lot of, that, a lot of that's going to be uh, commercial space. You're not going to find as much residential space here in downtown uh, as you would over on the east side. So uh, those can potentially be businesses that are experiencing theft as opposed to you know, just a, a personal residence. Motor vehicle theft. Where are all the cars getting stolen? Yeah, very similar. Spread out pretty evenly, but again, at a higher rate over on the east side. Vandalism. A lot of vandalism downtown, uh, as you might imagine. Going to kind of fall uh, right in uh, line with uh, your theft or also known as your larceny. So again, July 2022 to July 2023, I wanted you to see what things look like as far back as I could go, which was May of 2015 uh, to April of 2016. So what did things look like back then from about seven years ago? So assault offenses, 7,400 back then compared to 10,000 in the most recent year. Homicides, 22, 22 homicides compared to 108 homicides. And again, you can see those homicides 
going to be at a higher rate over on the east side. I was also true, uh, you know, about seven years ago or so. Burglary spread out pretty evenly, 3,578 burglaries compared to 6,088 burglaries. One thing that also stood out to me here, uh, larceny again, so your theft, right about the same actually, 24,599 larceny offenses seven years ago compared to 24,547. So not a whole lot has changed actually with the theft. Motor vehicle theft, 10,759 in the past year compared to 4,555. And again, still going to be the east side. So the east side, as you can, you're starting to, uh, to see, that's where a lot of the crime um, has you know, taken place over, over recent decades. So not a whole lot has changed over on the east side other than just things uh, simply getting worse. And then how about vandalism? Probably going to be very similar uh, as far as your areas. 6,030 reported seven years ago. More than double that, 13,390 in the past year. Again, a lot of it concentrated in downtown Portland, but more so spread out uh, throughout the city back seven years ago. Much more concentration uh, in downtown compared to seven years ago. So here's from that survey that, that I mentioned. And uh, what, this, what the, this is a very comprehensive survey. Uh, I can include this uh, in the uh, description if people want to take a look at this as well. But what it's asking is safety walking during the daytime. And the statement is, I feel safe walking during the day in my neighborhood. The majority of participants, they can answer anywhere from strongly uh, agree to strongly disagree. And more importantly, where is this broken down? So the people that agree, or rather, we should be looking at uh, the people that strongly disagree. Who are the people that strongly disagree that they feel safe walking around in their neighborhood in the daytime? It's the people, not surprisingly, in the east side, the people over here, the people in these neighborhoods, Montanaville, Hazelwood, Centennial, Lentz, Powell. And if you've looked at home values online, some people have commented to, to me or, or asked me why homes are less expensive uh, over there. Well. That there's a big reason right why uh, right there not to say that all of that area is bad I have family that live over there so I wouldn't try to deter anybody that wants to live over there if they want to be on the east side for work or for whatever reason there's definitely a lot of great spots over there but as you can see from some of the data you're gonna find a much higher concentration of crime and uh, that's uh, expressed through the uh, the survey of the citizens as well so another thing that people often ask too is uh, it seems there seems to have been some debate about this over time. Did Portland defund the police? And uh, the Portland police uh, do uh, publish their budget. Um, but according to PBS, among the rallying cries were to defund the police, a call for the elected officials to relocate some law enforcement funding elsewhere. In June 2020, the Portland City Council and mayor answered by cutting millions from the police budget. Now, a year and a half later, officials partially restored the cut funds. Uh, this article is from 2021. I think they have uh, completely restored the funds. There's definitely been, um, it feels like a sentiment uh, towards building back up uh, uh, the Portland Police uh, Bureau. Now, um, as far as the uh, the whole defund the police um, you know, campaign, if you will, uh, it was obviously um, ill-conceived. Uh, but uh, to, to maybe give you a, a balanced uh, perspective for, for the people that are saying, well, there's the, that, that's not what we meant specifically. We didn't mean specifically to defund the police. The, the whole idea was to take money away from the police, as they did, and allocate it to other places. And uh, I, I think, uh, to be fair, um, there is some merit in that, in that we probably ask our police officers to do too much, probably asking them to handle too much. And uh, we could probably use some other some other people to uh, to assist the police officers and, and everything that they have to deal with in this day and age. Probably have to deal with a lot more than they did in past decades. So uh, for the people that are making that argument, I can definitely understand that uh, that uh, the the police definitely need some help, and especially with the mental health stuff. Uh, you know, not all police officers are going to be trained in uh, dealing with mental health crises, which. Um, seem to be uh, just continually rising. So um, for that side of the argument, uh, I, can, I can definitely see that. But uh, taking money away from, um, which was already uh, a small police department, 
uh, was probably, well, I, I think we can say definitively, was not a good idea. And actually, I'm going to get into the numbers as far as the, uh, the, the size of the police department goes uh, relative to, uh, to other uh, major metropolitan areas across the country. So how, how are we doing now? What, how are things trending these days? Here's a, the, a, an article. In fact, just from today, as I'm shooting this, August 30th, 2023, crime in Oregon starts to trend down according to FBI data. The rise in crime during the pandemic across most of Oregon's largest cities, including Portland, is abating according to the new state analysis of preliminary, preliminary federal crime data. From 2021 to 2022, across the state's largest cities, violent crime dropped a combined 8.8%. And property crime decreased by 2.6%. The report released this week was compiled by the Oregon Criminal Justice Commission, a state agency that helps develop criminal justice policy and a statewide clearinghouse for criminal justice data. The agency examined data in Bend, Eugene, Gresham, Hillsborough, Portland, and Salem and has based uh, its analysis on the FBI's preliminary Uniform Crime Report of 2022, which federal government released last month. Oregon statewide figures could shift as the FBI releases data that includes the rest of the state this year. There are indicators that the crime is uh, either plateauing or maybe beginning to come down after a pretty significant increase that we've seen over the past year and a half, said Ken Sanchargen, San, San, Sanchargen executive director of Criminal Justice Commission. In this article that we started out with here, uh, Portland sobers up. Uh, where we left off starts to allude to the same thing. But while it's too soon to declare that Portland's troubles have passed, the worst may now be over. Despite ongoing woes, Portland looks and feels much better than it did in dystopian 2020. The riots stopped and the crime wave seems to have peaked with the shootings down by nearly 40 percent homicides down more than 50 percent in the early months of 2023 and i can i can say uh, anecdotally from the things that i've observed uh, this uh, seems to be pretty accurate seems to have been the case that there was a lot of uh, a lot of well-meaning protesters uh, getting out there in the daytime um, and good for them uh, but at nighttime, a lot of uh, people, and as this article described, uh, anarchists, a lot of those people uh, came out. And, um, yeah, for whatever reason, uh, the city did not deter those people. By the way, I should, uh, I should cite this uh, author. Michael J. Totten is the author of that article. So it kind of takes it back to like what I mentioned uh, at the beginning. People ask about these things a lot. I see people talking about these things a lot. And as a licensed broker in the state of Oregon, a lot of my conversation is about where are people moving to? And by the way, welcome back to the channel. If you're new to this channel, live in Oregon, you want to see more videos about what it's like to live in Oregon, whether it's videos like this about statistics, vlogs about neighborhoods, drone footage, pros and cons, cost of living, everything is going to give you a feel for what it's like to live in Oregon, especially Portland. Make sure and subscribe to this channel. My name is Seth Marchant. I'm a licensed broker in the state of Oregon. I talk to people about moving here all the time. If you're one of those people that's thinking about moving here, you can call, text, email. You can click the link below in the description of this video on YouTube. If you're watching from TV, hit that QR code. It'll take you to our website where you can also find all of our contact information. So talking to people about moving here, where are people typically moving to? To. So Portland or the Portland metropolitan area consists of three counties. Multnomah County is where Portland is. The other two counties, Clackamas and Washington County, that's where a lot of people are moving to, Clackamas and Washington County. So a lot of people have left Multnomah for Clackamas and Washington County. Clark County is across the river where Vancouver, Washington is. Also Deschutes County where Bend, Oregon is one of the top places that people have moved to from outside of Multnomah County. So if you're wondering, uh, and the data is a little bit harder to compile. Clackamas County and Washington County, they don't just have one you know, police bureau, so it's kind of scattered. But maybe the important number for you, uh, what were the homicides in Clackamas County uh, over the past year? There was five homicides in Clackamas County. Going to Washington County's Washington County's website, uh, we just have data on here uh, through the year, back through January, there's been two homicides so far in Washington County this year. So a stark contrast between Washington, Clackamas County, and Multnomah County, where Portland is. So if you're somebody that's thinking about moving to Portland, uh, it's a big area. 
a lot of people move to Washington Clackamas County, like I said, uh, if maybe you're moving here for a job, if you're worried about something like that, just know that a lot of these statistics in those two counties, Washington and Clackamas County, are very, very low. In fact, if we look at the top 10 lowest crime areas in the state of Oregon or the list of the safest cities in the state of Oregon, four out of the top 10 are in Washington or Clackamas County. Westland is number one, which is in Clackamas County. Sherwood in Washington County is number two. Number four is Lake Oswego, which is also in Clackamas County. And then number six, Milwaukee, making it uh, in the list as well, which is also in Clackamas County. And then Ben, that's that place that I mentioned that's in Deschutes County. So Milwaukee too, that one kind of jumps out to me because that one uh, has the closest proximity to Portland. Let me take you to a map here real quick. Milwaukee is right there, just south of Portland. So all those, that map that we've been looking at is all right here. So Milwaukee just borders this area. Milwaukee would be right here. In fact, Ardenwald, there's a elementary school there, Ardenwald Elementary. Some of this, that uh, area is actually uh, in Milwaukee. So interesting to see Milwaukee there. I'd say Milwaukee is actually probably one of the better values in the Portland metropolitan area. I know it very well. I grew up in that area. And uh, anecdotally, I would say, yeah, it's a great area. It's, it's, a, it's a safe area. And the thing about Milwaukee, too, is uh, your home values right here. Uh, the reason why I say it's such a good value is because once you get into kind of this, you can actually, the border between Multnomah County and uh, Clackamas County is right about here. You can actually follow this road right here. Or uh, this road up here, rather, Johnson Creek Boulevard. That's right about where the border is. And once you get north of there, at least up and before up until uh before 2020 uh, before a lot of this uh, stuff started the home values uh, increased dramatically homes in milwaukee were significantly cheaper about three years ago you know the, the gap uh, has narrowed quite a bit over the past three years but three years ago significantly cheaper than southeast portland and you're five six seven minutes uh, away from southeast portland 10 10 minutes away from getting to downtown portland so it really makes uh, Milwaukee uh, a, a really great value. If you go over to the other side of the river, this real estate over here, Lake Oswego, Dunthorpe, some of the most expensive real estate in the Portland metropolitan area. And similarly, but if, we, if we go to the east, these are some of the, the high crime areas that we've seen show up. Centennial, Hazelwood, Montanaville. This is where those high crime areas are. But just south of there, Happy Valley considered one of the more desirable and one of the newest parts of uh, the Portland metropolitan area, specifically for the east side. Home values uh, are much higher here in Happy Valley than they are in neighboring Milwaukee. So pretty much everything around Milwaukee, even if you go south of there, a lot of home values in Oregon City are going to be slightly higher than Milwaukee. So Milwaukee is kind of surrounded, <laughs> regardless of where you go, um, by higher home values. So Milwaukee is kind of this little pocket, like kind of hidden gem. Um, and in fact, uh, in the late teens, uh, that one of the zip codes in Milwaukee was uh, one of the hottest zip codes uh, in the entire Portland metropolitan area. So that area uh, sort of caught on, um, but still a, re a really good area and still uh, still probably one of the better values in the Portland metro area. So I mentioned looking at some of the numbers compared to other major metropolitan areas. These numbers right here are how many officers you have per 10,000 people of population and Portland right there, 14.1 officers for every 10,000 people. Now, if you compare that to a Seattle, Seattle's 19.8. Uh, Denver, 21.2. San Francisco, 26.4. I know, that, I know uh, I've seen a lot, of, uh, a lot of the reports, a lot of the news articles, a lot of videos about some of the, the, the crime situation going on in San Francisco. So you can imagine, um, in Portland, uh, we have fewer officers than just about every major metropolitan area in the country. And that's been reflected, too, um, in the news lately. You hear uh, people talking about, they call 911, nobody shows up, nobody shows up for hours. Where are the police? Weren't the police doing anything? Well, it's going to be a big reason why. It's probably fair to say that we don't have adequate resources. Now, aside from the uh, defund the police movement, uh, I'm not sure what sort of stats there are on this, but uh, I'm sure 
just anecdotally, anybody could understand that uh, if there was some sort of movement movement to uh, defund whatever line of work uh, that, that you do, that would probably have to be pretty demoralizing, make it probably pretty tough to retain employees, pretty tough to, uh, to recruit new employees. You know, imagine if you're a, you know, a delivery driver and there is a, a movement to uh, defund all the delivery drivers uh, that probably wouldn't make you feel too good about uh, the work that you do. So I know that the Portland Police Bureau is actively working on improving that, and it seems like they do now have the support of the people, and that uh, is, is, has led to uh, sort of the, the optimism and, and also reflected in the numbers that, uh, that the crime is actually going down. And again, as somebody that's lived here uh, my entire life, and I have no intention of moving, we all have... Uh, and let me scroll down for you a little bit, too. I think we might have missed a little bit. Th these are the months. If you want to see, you can kind of see right here month by month those numbers going down. But like I was saying, uh, we all have an interest uh, in things improving in our city, you know, with the exception of uh, a few small people that, uh, that I think were mentioned uh, in this article right here. Again, th there does seem to be uh, some number of people who associate uh, with anarchy and uh, really um, didn't have any interest in uh, social justice. They just had uh, an interest uh, in burning things down. But I think, again, the city, uh, the sentiment is really starting to change. And uh, the reason why a lot of people are not leaving is because this is one of the best cities. This is one of the best states in the country. It's beautiful here. The people really are great. There's just a, there's a handful of bad apples for sure. And again, if you're moving uh, to Portland, um, Clackamas County, Washington County. Um, it's it's pretty suburban. It's pretty tranquil there. Very, very low crime. In fact, most of the people living in those counties, uh, if they weren't paying attention to the news, they, they might not have even known that any of this stuff was going on in Portland with all the protesting, and uh, but more specifically, all of the rioting that went on for so long. So I hope that uh, gives you a little bit better sense as to what the crime is like right now in the Portland metropolitan area. Again, not just in Portland proper, but in the surrounding counties and, and kind of where things are trending. Again, I'm a licensed broker in the state of Oregon. I help a lot of people move here and buy homes here. If you're one of those people that has questions, you can call, text, email. Again, click the link below in the description if you want to schedule a Zoom call or hit that, hit that QR code if you want to get to our website. And again, if you made it all the way to this end, end of this video and you want to get a, a much better sense as to what it's like to live in Oregon and live in Portland, definitely make sure and subscribe to this channel. Until next time, take care, everyone.